previously on Left Behind. I want constant rounds of chopper hops to get the rest of these people inside Petra. They're going to grind these people into the dust. Maybe we should have fired on them. Welcome, Chloe. I'm Enoch. What are you all doing here? I'm sure that's what my friends and I want to know from you as well. You must come get these children out of here. You must get them to safety. Nowhere is safe. The, the chasm's coming back together! It, it is just like the Red Sea in biblical days. The earth, the earth is opening! Embrace yourself! Based on Desecration, the ninth book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 107 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. are cross-checked. George, Sebastian, and you're from? Uh, San Diego. United North American States. Weight and height? 6'4", 240. All right. You'll be transporting a teen male and a teen female prisoner from Greece to the States, and you'll be flying a four-seat aircraft. What are we calling it? Brewster Tail. Got it. Um, and you'll be traveling WOP without papers, and I'll give you a level A minus clearance, and you'll report directly to Deputy Commander Marcus Elbaz. Got it. Your contact in Greece is Lucas Miklos. He'll deliver both teams to you at a rendezvous point that I'll explain in a moment. First, let me give you your mission code that should get you past any security you come up against. Ready to write this down? Uh, shoot. 040301. Got it. Nothing from the front lines? No, Excellency. You have conferred upon your underlings the power I have imbued you with, have you not? I have, Your Worship, but I prefer not to refer to them as underlings. Have any of them, or you, come up with something to counter the oceans to blood trick? Well, sir, uh, no, I... I do not believe you realize the scope of the tragedy on the high seas. Do you, Leon? Huh? Enough to hope it's not permanent, Excellency. Oh, you hope. Think, man. Our ships are immobile. The blood viscosity is such that no movement can be carried out with any efficiency whatsoever. The thickness of the blood? Correct. Additionally, our marine biologists tell us every creature in the water is guaranteed dead by now. Even if this is temporary, and the water turns pristine tomorrow morning, do you think all the fishes will come flopping back to life? I would certainly hope so. <sighs> Imbecile. Why was Miss Ivans late to the plane? I believe she wanted one last visit to the temple. She can tell you, of course, but I think she wanted to be the first woman to worship your image in the Holy of Holies <laughs> and experience the throne. What? You are not saying she would dare sit on the throne of God? No, sir, I misspoke there, Excellency. I'm certain she wanted only to see it, oh. to perhaps touch it. Uh, given the history of the temple, she mentioned wanting to violate a few traditions. Hmm. I like that. I thought you might. Your Excellency, we have completed the lie detection process with the stewards, the pilot, and Reverend Fortunato. All test truthful. Ah, then test Miss Ivans. And... There is a question I want added to her session. Please clip this on, ma'am. And what do we do if I am revealed as the leak to the mole? If you're ready? Ready. State your name. Miss Vivian Ivins. Is today Sunday? No, but I would like to know if I got the answer to the first question right. Mm -hmm. Is the sky blue? Yes. Are you a male? No. Do you work for the global community? Yes. It showed okay, ma'am, but just out of curiosity, why the hesitation? I have never really considered myself an employee of the global community. I serve supreme potentate Nikolai Carpathia, and I have most of my adult life. I would even if I were not compensated, but yes, I also actually am part of the personnel of the global community. Mm -hmm. uh, are you loyal to the supreme potentate? Yes. 
Have you ever done anything that could be considered disloyal to the Supreme Potentate? No. Do you leak confidential information from the Supreme Potentate to anyone at GC headquarters? No. Is the Supreme Potentate risen from the dead and the living Lord? Yes. Can His Excellency Nikolai Carpathia personally count on your continuing loyalty for as long as you serve as an employee of the global community? Yes, and beyond. Did you sit on his throne in his temple in Jerusalem today? I... Uh, I... Uh, no. Thank you for your time, Miss Ivins. Director Akbar, wait, please. Before you share the results with His Excellency, let me have a word with him. Mm, certainly. My lord. Yes, dear one. May I kneel and kiss your hand? Well, that depends. How did you do on the little test? I don't know, but regardless of the results, I answered truthfully until the very end. You were deceitful in your answer to my question? I was, sir, but I immediately regretted it and have come to beg your forgiveness. I told Reverend Fortunato what I intended to do. He advised me against it. Did he? Did you, Leon? I did, Your Worship. Good for you. But it should not be only the Most High Reverend Father of Carpathianism who knows what a defilement it would be to presume to sit on the throne of God. I am so sorry, Nikolai. I did not do it as an act of insouciance, I swear to you. I merely envied your moment and felt a deep need to share it. I would like to think I earned the right uh, with... Uh, 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 earned the right to sit on my throne? To take my place? With my years of service, with my uncompromising devotion, with my love for you. Please don't dismiss me, Your Worship. Forgive me, please. Suhail. Excellency. I want you to administer the test to me. Uh, uh, as you wish, Excellency. State your name. God. Is today Sunday? Hmm, yes. Is the sky blue? No. Uh, are you a male? No. Uh, do you serve the global community? No. Are you loyal to the citizens under your authority? <laughs> no. Have you ever done anything disloyal to the global community? Yes. Do you leak confidential information to someone inside GC headquarters that undermines the effectiveness of your cabinet? No, and I would personally kill anyone who did. Did you rise from the dead and are you the living lord? Yes. Can the global community count on your continuing loyalty for as long as you serve as supreme potentate? No. <laughs> you astound me, Excellency. <laughs> well? I, I don't know how you do that. Your answers all prove truthful, even when you were obviously sporting with me and, and saying the opposite of the truth. It's... The truth is what I say it is, Suhail. You see, I am the father of truth. Suhail, I have made the decision not to replace Mr. Moon as Supreme Commander. I see. As the job and the title are redundant. Whatever you say, Excellency. I will count on you more and more, and uh, you may inherit duties that might otherwise have been carried out by a Supreme Commander. As you wish. First assignment, take action on our security leak. Excellency, we are already conducting a full investigation at the palace. As you know, we turned up nothing on the planes. How does that make sense? You told me it was as if someone were relaying our very conversations to someone with access to the central database. That is certainly how it appeared. We're scouring headquarters for weaknesses in our firewalls, but, well, the late Mr. Hasid put the entire system in place, and there was not a better person in the world for the job. His replacement, the uh, South American... Uh, Mexican, but... sir. Figueroa. You have confidence in him? Hmm. He has a stellar record. Not the technician Hasid was, but capable. Uh -huh. He has overseen the testing, and he himself will also be tested, of course. I want to send a message to whoever is subverting us from inside. Get them to panic. Put them on the defensive. I'm open to any suggestion, potentate. Charge the Indians. Sir? The stewards. Uh, convict them of treason. On what evidence? They are the only logical ones. The pilot was not even on board during most of our meetings. They were. They did test clean. Who knows that but you and me? No one. Am I correct? You are. Yes. Whisper the charges to Leon and to Viv. Then release it to the media. 
The stewards should disembark in New Babylon in handcuffs. If convicted, the penalty is death. Oh, Suhail, if they get off this plane in shackles, consider them convicted. The execution should follow within 48 hours. Done. Uh huh. And your conscience, Director? My conscience, sir? Yes. Knowing the truth, does this give you pause? No, sir. As you have aptly demonstrated, you are the father of truth. <laughs> ah, finally, the report from Petra. It's about time. I'll get it, sir. Yeah, you know, they, uh, they do good work, though. Do they not? Uh, the stewards. Oh, yes, quite. No need to inform them or uh, cuff them until we touch down. But uh, do get the information trail started. And then we will discuss the final solution for the Israeli dissidents and the Judahites. Sir, I'm afraid I have bad news. Well, I do not want bad news. <laughs> the plan was flawless. We had the equipment, the personnel, our troops were healthy. Well, what? What could be bad news? We have no words, sir. <laughs> No, nonsense. They were to report as soon as they had overtaken the insurgents. What? What happened? We're not sure yet. You must have had 200 commanding officers involved. More than that. And not a word from one of them? Our stratospheric photo planes show our forces advancing to within feet of overrunning approximately half a million outside Petra. A cloud of dust and the enemy, in essence, plowed under. Our planes waited until the dust cloud settled and now find no evidence of our troops. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I wish I were jesting. High altitude photographs ten minutes after the offensive show the same crowd outside Petra, and yet... And none of our troops. You said that. And our armaments? One of the largest conglomerations of firepower ever assembled, split into three divisions. I believe you describe them as invincible. They've disappeared. I want the potentate of each of the world regions on his way to New Babylon within the hour. Any who are not en route 60 minutes from now will be replaced. See to that immediately. And when you determine when they will all arrive, set a meeting for the senior cabinet, the ten potentates, and myself an hour later. And these Jews, we expect them all to be in Petra as soon as they can be transported there? Actually, they will not all fit. We expect Petra itself to be full and the rest to camp nearby. Ah. What is required to level Petra and the surrounding area? Two planes, two crews, two annihilation devices. We would also have the option of launching a subsequent missile to ensure thorough devastation. Although, that might be overkill. <laughs> oh, uh, you will one day come to realize that there is no such thing as overkill. Let the Jews and the Judahites think that they have had their little victory and keep the failed operation quiet. We never launched it. Our missing troops and vehicles and armaments never existed. And what of the questions from the families? Well, the questions should go to the families. We demand to know where these soldiers are and what they have done with our equipment. Tens of thousands AWOL, Excellency? That will be our position? No, Suhail. We will have you go on international television and tell the GCCNN audience that the greatest military effort ever carried out was met by half a million unarmed Jews who made it disappear. Uh, perhaps you could use a flip chart, huh? Now you see us, now you do not. Look, a little white car. Is that Mr. Kronos? Oh, you, you wait here. Oh, hurry, he tapped his brake once. That is our signal that uh, no one is around. Sir... Why does Mr. Cronus talk so funny? Oh, Marcel, you know, age does things. His front teeth are missing. Here, you get in the front. I'll sit in back. Oh. He is written. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. What are we looking for again? A small stone on top of two, eight kilometers from the airport. And we've gone almost eight now. Should be in the underbrush. Wait, there, look, the stones. There is no one following us. Come on, young lady, we don't want to be seen. Want me to call for her? She was supposed to find us, right? Right. All of these stick to the plan. If the plan changes, you don't improvise, you leave. Agreed. Ten seconds, I won't stay here any longer than that. There she is, with the baseball cap. Welcome. Hello, Marcel. Good to see you again. Yeah, hi. Let's go. Oh, let me take your satchel for oh, the lady. I'm fine. Thank you. You must be Lucas. I'm Georgiana, and this must be Kronos. Hello. 
This is exciting. He is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. Is that all you brought? It's all I have, sir, and all I need. Venturing out into the new world with hardly a thing to your name? Gold is able. Marcel tells me you have a gun. Marcel has the mouth of a young man. You must both learn to say little and listen much. I'm sorry. Am I talking too much? Just excited, that's all. I haven't felt this way since the day Mr. Williams let me go. So I can't see your gun? I do not bring my gun out of my home. But Kronos has a gun, don't you, young man? No. <laughs> you watch too much television, I think. Not for a long time. When I do see it, it's all Carpathia, Carpathia, Carpathia. Ah, now, you're both clear on the plan. If Marcel is, I am. He's the one who told me. We're meeting this George guy off the road up from the airport. He'll take us in like we're his prisoners, and we fly to safety. Yes, and you must avoid eye contact. Look sullen and just go directly to the plane with him. Uh, maybe you could let Marcel wear your hat low enough to cover his eyes, and you could let your hair hang in your face, I'm huh? sure the hat wouldn't fit him. Anyway, how will we recognize the pilot? Oh, he should be the only guy on the road looking for you. But he's a big man, right? American? Taller than six feet and almost 250 pounds. You'll know him. You'll know him. Now, we should play. Yes, please. And why don't you lead us? Ah, uh, I'm too nervous. <laughs> All right. Lord, we thank you for these young people and ask you to go before them and protect them. We ask there you... There is! Is that him? It has to be. Mm, he's early. Lucas. Lucas Miklos. Hey, Mr. Sebastian. Marcel Georgiana. Oh, keep rolling, Kay. I don't like this. Why? What's wrong? Something is not right, But Kay. it has to be him. Keep going, Kay. No, stop. We're not going to make this transfer in the middle of the road. Kronos, pull over. She has a gun. I'll kill him if you don't stop. Keep going, Kay. Marcel is for real. I know him. Shut up. Now stop. I mean Take it. Take that hat off. Shut up. It's Carpathia's mark. This isn't what? Georgia. Ah! Ah! Marcel! Stop now, or I blow you away! Then do it. I said stop! Oh, 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 you killed my friends. And you will die too, Judah. I... Can't give me the gun. No, 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 you're right. Yes, he's the only one left. The old one wouldn't stop the car. They're both dead. Oh, and God. you will die you too, my rock Judah. I will die too, into your hands. You I commit... Will... My I, spirit! I promised you I'd die, Judah. No, 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 don't be! He could give us information! Give me that gas, please! Ah. Ah. Oh. It was self-defense! He tried to kill me! Oh. Drag them out. We'll use this car to intercept the pilot. Yeah, we're short-staffed tonight. A hard copy is quicker than the computer, if you don't mind. I hear you, but I told you, old man Elbaz had me on recon runs over rebel territory in the Negev. We were all required to leave our IDs at Field HQ. It's all in the computer. Oh, they never think about what those decisions mean to us little guys. <laughs> Tell me about it. Sorry for all the hassle it's causing you. Well, what are you gonna do? Let's see what I can find here. Hey, what about all those guys going AWOL on Jordan? Don't think I wasn't tempted. The strangest deal I've ever seen. You get the boils? Who didn't? Okay. Yeah, here it is. Oh, you're good. You got a number for me? Yeah, 040301. That's it. Where are your prisoners? I'm being held up the road. Need a vehicle? Oh, that'd be great. It shouldn't take long. I'll secure them in the plane and bring the wheels directly to you. Word of God tells us we will live here unmolested. Our clothes not wearing out. Fed and quenched until the wrath of God against his enemies is complete. Some would look upon this place a refuge and say it is desolate and barren. Yet, God has sent us quail even this evening, and in the morning these rocks will be filled with bread. Take, eat, and see that it is filling and sweet like wafers made with honey. And what shall we drink? Let these rocks bear witness that God Almighty Himself has provided!
Georgiana! Oh, George! Yes! Oh, we were ambushed! What? Oh, oh, you're covered in blood. What happened? Oh, it, it, it all happened so it's, fast! It's okay now. I, it's all right. Oh. Hey, where are the others? He's unarmed! What? Surrender! Oh. Steal it! Cup him! Oh, oh. We're going to have fun with you, Yank. Get him in and let's go. We have some questions for Mr. Sebastian. By the time we're through, we'll know everything you know. Huh? Steel. I think I followed instructions on calling securely. Nonetheless, would you be so kind as to confirm the status of this call? Who am I speaking with? Secure status, please. Stand by. Yeah, you're secure. You've got trouble. Do you have anybody inside at New Babylon to replace your guy that died? I really need to know who I'm speaking with. Well, you may know me as Pinkerton Stevens, GC, stationed in Colorado. I need to be dead sure, Mr. Stevens. AKA Steve Blank. Steve? How'd you know our guy died? Everybody knows, man. Didn't he go down with three others right in front of Carpathia? Uh, that death. Actually, not really. So he died, but that wasn't how. Correct. Well, there's a story there for another time, I guess. Anyway, New Babylon thinks he's dead, so he's clearly not inside. We're covered at the palace. Oh, good. Then maybe you already know. Where are you? Over the Atlantic, westbound. Know what? You've been compromised. Me personally? No. You, yes, your friend is using has been exposed. INS speculating Deputy Commander Marcus Elbaz is actually a former black marketer out of Albaz. How did they know that? Was mostly coming out of Greece. Tell me we weren't wrong about the guy we sent in there. Sebastian? Oh, no, no, no. He's solid. But they've got him. <clears throat> okay, start from the top. Well, first, if your guy inside is still keeping track of Chicago and what the GC thinks about it, he better get in there and tinker. What are you saying? Oh, I doubt anybody else has checked lately, but. Just to be sure, I wasn't leading into a trap. I looked up that area, and something was giving off moving heat signals within the last several hours. We always tell him before we go out. That way he can head off any readings we emit. Well, somebody's on the move, Ray. Not much, but it'll arouse suspicion like it did with me. So, back to Greece. We know Buck's Jack Jensen idea is history. Uh, well, that's not the worst of it. He cut loose a couple of kids from a detention center, and... One of them, the girl, Stavros, got herself caught. You can't blame her, she's a kid. And apparently she cracked and gave up a lot. The story she told matched up with what they figure happened with the boy her age, a kid named Tabadopoulos. GC in Greece plants a young woman with similar looks to this Stavros in the underground. She started asking around about the boy, somebody gets him connected. Bada bing, she gets him believing she was freed by the same guy. Nobody checks her out. She stays away from people who would know she wasn't who she claimed to be. And she walks our people into an ambush. Yeah, yeah. And she sees as the roost went squirrely at the end, and their operatives wound up having to kill an old man named Kronos, a big fish named of Miklos, and the boy. Terrific. And Sebastian. Live? And well, evidently. But they're confident they can get what they need from him to lead them to Ben Judah. They know he's former military and that he might be tougher than they think. Plus, he doesn't know that much. He was supposed to bring the kids to you, though, right? He's got to know enough to hurt you. He does. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is based in part on the book Desecration by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. Adapted for radio by Chris Fabry. Music by Steve Wick. Sound design by Glenn West. Directed and produced by Todd Bastide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.